Okay, uh, hello everybody. M80, whatever, whatever it is, 13.50, Monday, November 16. I want to say a few more things about not colorings today. Uh, it should be fun. I mean, I may blunder. I may mess it up. Sometimes I do. But it should be a fun class if I don't blunder. Okay? So, but first, just to remind you, Pi 1, the fundamental group of a knot, uh, has a presentation called the Wirtinger presentation and uh, it's as follows so for every arc of the knot you put an arc underneath and you call them AI but here for the ex example I call them A, B and C and then for every crossing you have a relation and the relation says that A is equal to C conjugated by B? No, I meant B conjugated by C. Sorry, I meant B conjugated by C, so, uh, uh, so C inverse B, uh, C. Sorry, so that was supposed to be uh, B conjugated by C. Okay, uh, now, uh, uh, good. So now back to not, col not colorings. So instead of coloring a knot by uh, three colors, like we've done before, so I don't know, red, green, and blue, you can pick a finite dimension, sorry, a finite group. So instead, uh, you can uh, pick a finite uh, group uh, G, and color the knot by uh, and color by uh, homomorphisms or what would replace the colorings would be homomorphisms of pi 1 into G. But what does it mean? Since pi 1 is generated by uh, uh, the arcs of the knot, or I mean more precisely by curves under the arcs. Uh, so, uh, by, by, uh, uh, but still, they have one generator per arc. So really, you are coloring uh, every uh, edge, every arc of the knot by an element of G. So you're coloring them by A, B, and C where A, B, and C should satisfy a relation at each crossing, and the relation is precisely the relation written here. So, coloring becomes vastly more general. Now, in fact, uh, so, uh, and then the invariant would be to count the number of coloring. In fact, uh, you can do a little better, namely, uh, since, uh, sorry, since the relations are always of the form, uh, so the relations are always of the form, uh, some one generator is equal to the conjugate of another by a third, really you don't really need the whole group, you only need one conjugacy class. All the relations stay within one conjugacy class. So instead of looking at, so improve further, instead of looking at uh, home uh, homomorphisms uh, from pi 1 uh, to g, we will look at homomorphisms which stay in one whose image stays in one conjugacy class. So let me define this. So uh, pick some element G, lowercase g, inside the group. The conjugacy class of lowercase g, let me call it, well it's basically all the conjugates of lowercase g and since I'm denoting conjugation by power, I may as well call it g raised to the power g. 
Okay, so this is the conjugacy class of G. And hom a homomorphism from pi 1 into a conjugacy class would just mean uh, a collection, uh, would just mean a map phi going from pi 1 into the group uh, which has the additional condition, or which, which, has, which satisfies two conditions. So one, it is a homomorphism. And two, the image is always in this conjugacy class. So for uh, every uh, generator, I only care, I mean, I only uh, insist on it for generators of uh, pi 1 uh, using the Wirtinger presentation. I will not write it, but this is implied. Uh, so for every generator of pi 1 using uh, the Wirtinger uh, uh, um, uh, rel um, uh, presentation, phi of A uh, is a conjugate of uh, G. Sorry, that came out not the prettiest uh, typesetting. Okay? So, let me do an example. Okay? So, uh, example, um, so let's take one of the simplest, sorry, simplest in the non-technical sense. I don't mean a simple group, I mean a group which is, well, hmm, uh, I mean a group which is easy, not a group which is, simple groups are actually hard. Okay, so uh, let's take the group uh, D to N, the dihedral group with two N elements. So this is the group generated by two types of generators. So, you know, maybe one way to write it, well, it's the, it's the group of the symmetries of the uh, N-gon, of the uh, polygon, perfect polygon of order N, okay? But a different way to write it is to say that it's the group of um, uh, maps from the complex numbers to the complex numbers that is generated by two types of generators. So one generator is uh, Z going to uh, multiplication by uh, E to the 2 pi I over N so times e, so basically rotation by 1 over n. And the other generator is reflection, so z goes to z conjugate. Now, if you think about it, uh, there, are all, there are two n elements of the groups. There, there are uh, m rotations by powers of... of um, uh, of this number, so namely by um, uh, multiples of 1 over n, and such rotations and, and conjugations which are followed by rotation, so reflection and then rotation by one of these uh, uh, powers of uh, e to the 2 pi i over n. So a different way to say it is that this group is the group of pairs S comma uh, K, I shouldn't have used N because N I've already used, so it's the group of pairs S comma K where uh, S stands for uh, whether or not you apply the conjugation, so uh, S really is uh, a, a either a plus one or a minus one, where plus one means do not conjugate and minus one means uh, conjugate, and k is an integer from zero to n, which really means that it's an element of z mod n. And then there is a product rule, and the product rule is, let me copy it from my notes, uh, so you just check it, it's very, I mean, it's a mechanical verification, so S1 uh, 
uh, multiplied by K1, uh, sorry, S1, K1, so you either conjugate or not, and then rotate by K1, and then uh, either conjugate or not, and then rotate by K2. So uh, the product is, so uh, uh, S1 times S2, so basically you multiply the plus or minus one signs, and then um, you uh, uh, look at S2, K1, so if you've rotated by K1 and then conjugated, then, then you've rotated by minus K1, uh, plus K2. Sorry, that's the multiplication rule. And then it's very easy to verify that the inverse, so the inverse of SK is uh, S comma minus SK, and I actually don't care about multiply, multiplying and I don't care about inverses, I only care about conjugation. So uh, I need to tell you about how to conjugate. So I could write the full formula for conjugation, but let me tell you that I care only about one conjugacy class for the purpose of the story that I'm going to tell you. So, the conjugacy class that I care about is the conjugacy class of reflection. So, the conjugacy class of reflection, so this is the conjugacy class of minus 1, 0, and I allow myself to conjugate it by anything, and I claim that this is uh, minus 1, it's the set of all things of the form, minus 1k. So basically, all the things that have a reflection in them and perhaps a conjugation. Uh, so indeed, uh, you simply compute uh, what is the conjugate of uh, minus 1k1 by uh, minus 1k2 and since I wrote the product and the inverse, it's a mechanical computation, and the result is uh, minus 1, uh, uh, 2k2 uh, minus k1. So, uh, so, so first of all, I got the formula for conjugation. So I got the formula well, but, but also, uh, if k1 is equal to 0, this is just minus 1 and comma 2k2, and if 2 is invertible, then 2k2 can, boot, can be anything. Okay? So this proves that the conjugacy class of minus 1, 0 is really what I've asserted. So uh, maybe I should add, uh, unless... Uh, n is equal to 2, and if n is equal to 2, the group is abelian. Okay, so, so, so the conjugacy, class, conjugacy classes are singletons. Okay, anyway, so why did I tell you all that? Or why did I tell you in particular all, all of this? Because, uh, so now consider a crossing, and the law the rule for coloring was that you color each arc by an element of a conjugacy class, of this conjugacy class. Our conjugacy classes are just determined by integers in our particular case. So the integers are k1, k2, and k3. Right? Each arc gets labeled by an integer. And the rule is that uh, uh, k2 is the conjugate of k1 by k3. Or more precisely, minus 1 k1 is the conjugate of minus 1 k2 by minus, by minus 1 k3. But let me drop the minuses from the notation. So the rules is, 
So such that, I mean, I insist that I will color uh, these numbers in such a way that uh, K2, oh no, oh no, sorry, uh, uh, here I conjugated by 2, but you know what, maybe, maybe I'll change the, the notation here. So really I should have been conjugated, conjugating by K3. Okay, so such that K2 is equal to 2K3 minus K1. Okay, or said differently, uh, K1 plus K2 is equal to 2K3. Okay, uh, or uh, uh, where all the ki's are in z mod n. And this is now a generalization of ordinary knot colorings. Now we have n colors, and instead of the conditions that we had before, the condition is uh, that the uh, the sum of the two understrands is the color of the top strand and in one particular case we've seen it so uh, if um, uh, n is equal to 3 the condition becomes so this becomes so 2 is equal to minus 1 and then I can move the K3 to the other side, and the condition becomes K1 plus K2 plus K3 is equal to zero, which is exactly the condition uh, you, you had before. Okay? Now, uh, for, for three colorings. So that was sort of the generalization I was dreaming people would find. Okay? I mean, not all the way to the fundamental group, but uh, I was hoping you, you will find the, the, um, the uh, Z mod N generalization. Um, by the way, so, uh, so if you fix N, uh, the set of N colorings is still a vector space because the relation is still a linear relation, and so uh, several other results that we had from, from, from three uh, colorings apply in, N, in the case of N. Okay. So, uh, that's uh, about going down, but now let's go up a bit. So, um, you see, the only thing I needed was conjugation, right? I didn't really need a group. We never needed to multiply. We only needed conjugation. And, and one way to see it was the fact that we could restrict our attention to a specific conjugacy class, okay? But, uh, uh, you know, it calls for axiomatization. So it calls for, um, let's try to figure out what axioms does conjugation satisfy. Okay, so multiplication in a group satisfies uh, the associative law, mostly the associative law, maybe also there are inverses. But what laws do, does conjugation satisfy? If we figure out which rules do con conjugation does conjugation satisfy, then we could, instead of looking for groups, we could look, look or, or conjugacy classes in groups, we could look for sets in general that satisfy the axioms that conjugation satisfies, and maybe it's a completely different class of algebraic objects. Or not different, a, a bigger class. Okay? Uh, so, uh, in other words, I want to axiomatize conjugation, okay? But, so I could do it by looking at groups for a little while and see what properties does conjugation have 
and then I'll have a little bit of a hard time deciding which properties are necessary for my story and which properties aren't. So instead I will look at knots and see what properties uh, are required from uh, a, a counting invariant so that it would be an invariant. Okay? So, uh, uh, I need to satisfy, so, 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 so here are my coloring rules. So, my coloring uh, rules will be the following. So, whenever I have a crossing, is this a positive or a negative crossing? This is positive. So, whenever I have a crossing, uh, the, uh, the, uh, suppose the bottom side of the crossing is labeled A and uh, B. My coloring rule, the coloring rule that I wish to keep, is that um, uh, the, the, the upper strand remains unchanged, so at the top the upper strand should also be colored by A, and the lower strand should get conjugated by A, by the upper strand, so this side should be, should be colored by B conjugated by A, except conjugation is not what I want. I want an abstract operation and I want to figure out which properties this operation should have. So let me rename this uh, B up A and the up, the wedge, it's not, it's not wedge, it's up symbol. So the up symbol should remind you that it's like conjugation but it's also enough different so that you should think that it's not conjugation. Okay, so what I'm looking for is I need a set Q of potential labels, potential colors, so, you know, of colors, but of course the word colors is meaningless, so it's in quotes, uh, an operation, a binary operation called up, going from Q, uh, sorry, it's not the rational numbers, uh, just Q without the blackboard bold. So Q cross Q into uh, Q, and such that the Reidemeister moves will be satisfied. Now let's figure out what do the Reidemeister moves mean. So, well, first of all, there is Reidemeister 1. So, Reidemeister 1 looks like this, and in, uh, if I were to label it, then uh, this would be labeled A, and this is the input label, label. and when I uh, come out, it should be labeled the same thing, because this should have the same colorings as a strand without a, a kink, and a strand without a kink can only be colored with one color. Okay, so the, the way the color transforms as I go through a kink should be the same as, as on the other side of the Reidemeister move where the transformation rule is to do nothing. So, the condition is, so, okay, if this is A, then it's A over here too, and then the condition is that A conjugated by A is A. Or more precisely, uh, a up A is equal to A. Okay? Now, uh, by the way, for conjugation, this is true. If you conjugate an element by itself, you get itself. But now this is an axiom for the operation up. Okay? Likewise, there should be... Uh, so, likewise, we should have invariants under Reidemeister 2, so let me draw Reidemeister 2. Uh, no, I think I want to draw it in a slightly bigger scale. So here is Reidemeister 2. 
and uh, so suppose it's colored in at the bottom with A and B. Then, oops, I failed to tell you something. So let me let me uh, let me tell it now. Okay. So first of all, uh, A passes through. It's colored by A, and uh, B gets conjugated by A, so this is B conjugated by A. And by the way, uh, this is a positive crossing, which is the same crossing, which is the same sense of crossing. This was also a positive crossing, which is, uh, which is what I used for my, for my definition. Sorry, and this is not B uh, conjugated by A, it's B up A. So it's uh, it's B up A. Now, if that was a okay, th the next crossing is a negative crossing. So if that was a group, I would have to conjugate B up A by A inverse. But I'm trying to work without it being a group. Okay? So, uh, I have two approaches. One approach is to say, I need yet another operation. Yet, and the yet another operation will be called um, uh, uh, A up hat. Uh, B, and group theoretically, so I should be thinking, I should be thinking, uh, I should be thinking, instead of A conjugated by B, it should be A conjugated by B inverse. Okay? But really, the main property that A hat B, A, hat, A, A up hat B, should have is that it should invert A hat B. So this should have the property that uh, A hat uh, uh, B uh, hat B is equal to A. Okay? So I could, so instead of having one operation, I could say, let me have two operations, hat and hat bar, and hat and hat bar should, should be inverses of each other in the sense written here. Alternatively, uh, instead of saying, instead of giving a name to the inverse, I should just say the operation hat should be invertible. So my second uh, condition, so by the way, maybe I should call this condition number one. Sorry. Ah. Maybe I should call uh, this condition number one, and my second condition should, is the condition that for every specific B, the operation A goes to A hat B, or sorry, A uh, up B, uh, as a map is an invertible map from Q into Q. It's true for conjugation and I want to insist that it will be true in general so that I'll know what to do on negative crossings. Uh, this is the too boring operation. Now comes the exciting one. So Reidemeister 3. So, uh, let me try to draw the two sides of Reidemeister 3. So, uh, one, uh, I don't know why it's always difficult for me to, to draw Reidemeister 3. So, this is equal to uh, 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 that
Is this Rydermeister 3? I think it is. Sorry, it's not the cleanest Rydermeister 3. But now suppose there are three inputs, A, B, and C. A, B, and C. Three colors are coloring at the bottom, and I want to make sure that they come out the same way. Okay, so what do I get here? So here A stays and B gets conjugated by A, so I, sorry, not conjugated, I get B up A. And then A stays still, and uh, here I got C up A, and then C up A gets conjugated by B up A, so the output here will be C up A up uh, B up A. Okay? And on the right hand side, I have, well, A goes through, B C becomes, so B goes through to here, C becomes C conjugated by B, and Okay, B becomes B conjugated by A. I failed to label the end, right? So B up A here is be still, still becomes B up A. So here I get B conjugated B up A. And then here I have C up A, C up B up A. C up B up A. A. So, my axiom number three is uh, axiom number three is that for every A, B, and C inside Q, I will have that uh, C up B up A this is the thing written here, is equal to C up A up B up A. And by the way, I messed up because uh, usually this is written with the opposite order of letters. Not that it matters, I mean it's the same, but usually it's written as uh, a up B up C is equal to A up C up B up C. Okay, you can check that this is satisfied by ordinary conjugation in ordinary groups. It's a, it takes a minute of verification, but you can check. We sort of know it will happen but we know it in a very convoluted way, right? Because we know it because um, the Wirtinger presentation involved only conjugation, and we were abstracting the, 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 uh, what we had there. And on the other hand, the Wirtinger presentation Provide, generated the group was it independent of the knot, so it was invariant under Rydermeister 3 moves, and so the conjugations would have to, to, to satisfy these conditions. But anyway, you can verify. Verifying it uh, is easy. I mean, so, I mean, maybe I'll, 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 I will not do it because it's a waste of time, but I would just say easy exercise uh, a up B equals AB, A to the power B, in a group, satisfies this. Again, it's just mechanical, a mechanical verification. Okay, but now I want to say a, a few uh, things about this. So, first of all, let's give it a name. So, definition, a quando so, I don't know, not a group, a quando, is uh, a set Q with an operation uh, up, which is an operation from Q times Q into Q, such that 
Uh, so, you know, I think groups also have about three axioms. So, quandals also have three axioms, and uh, they're different. So, one, uh, x up x is equal to x. Two, for every y, uh, the map x goes to x up y is uh, invertible. And three, um, uh, x up y up z is x up y, sorry, x up z, x up z uh, up uh, y up z. Now, you could say, sorry, questions, comments, are we, still, are we still in the same room? We're not. We're not even in the same country. Anyway, uh, 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 so this axiom may look bizarre, but I want to unbizarre it for you. Okay, this the last axiom. The first two axioms are kind of silly. This is like the identity, this is like the inverse axiom, but the last axiom looks bizarre. I want to unbizarre it for you. So axiom three, axiom three is sometimes called uh, well the operation up is self distributive. You see, what is written here is exactly the distributive law. So, I mean, if you don't believe me, write it the following way. Write it x plus y times z is equal to x times z plus y times z. I think you know the distributive law. But now replace all the operations by up. So it's x up y up z is equal to x up z up y up z, which is this axiom. So really it's the distributive law written if you had only one operation to play with. Okay? So that's one uh, observation. The second observation is a bit weirder. So, um, you know, let's ask ourselves the most philosophical question ever. So, uh, suppose you had a, a set with a binary operation. So, if uh, Q comma up, you know what? No, let me let me not bias you. So let's call it um, uh, M comma star is a set with a binary uh, operation. Uh, star is okay. Uh, now then it means that there is a... Okay, then uh, every uh, element M of the set uh, becomes a map from the set to the set. So defines uh, a map, what should I call it, T sub M, going from M to M by uh, T sub M acting on any X is equal to, let's say, multiplication by to on the right. So, so this is um, translation on the right. Okay? So now, what's the most natural axiom you can possibly put on a binary operation. 
well, I mean, maybe it's the associative law, but definitely one very, very, very natural axiom you can put on a binary, op on, on a set with a binary operation is that this map will be an automorphism. Right? I mean, it's the map, it's a map constructed out of M itself. How could it not be an automorphism? Right? So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, axiom uh, uh, for every M, translation by M is an automorphism. Is an automorphism. But what does it mean to be an automorphism? Right? It means that it preserves the operation. So, you want Tm acting on x star y to be uh, Tm of x star Tm of y. But this is x star y star m and this is x star m star y star m which is the quandle axiom so the quandle axiom really says when a set acts on itself this action is an automorphism I mean it's such a natural axiom. How come you haven't heard of it before? Maybe some of you have heard of it before. I don't know. But who have, have you heard of it before? I mean, it's such a natural thing. How come you haven't heard of it? Because it just doesn't happen in groups. Uh, you see what if that happened, the group would be trivial. But why are, we, why are we so biased in favor of groups? I mean, you know... Uh, we good about them, I guess. Read Dr. Sue. I mean, I don't know if Dr. Sue is popular in uh, in India, but you know there is on beyond zebra. Why stop at at, at groups? Okay. Uh, anyway, um, wait. What did I want to say? Um, you actually have heard of it, so I challenge you. Where have you seen this? concept before. Some of you may have seen it. This concept where a thing acts on itself by automorphism. Yeah, Jesse? Oh, okay, maybe not by automorphisms, but I know like union and intersection are self-distributive, but not, not invertible. Yeah, no, I wanted Oh right, by the way, I should <laughs> say I should <laughs> say that we're talking about this group again, like everything back to conjugation. Now is that what you're looking for? Sorry, what? No. No, no, I, I cannot go back to I cannot go back to conjugation. Maybe I should have said that sorry, to say that TM is an automorphism also means that it's invertible and that axiom number two. And axiom number number one is actually extra. I mean it's it's uh, it's 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 not not phrased in this language. But anyway, no, but where have you seen, have you ever seen before the statement something acts on itself, when something acts on itself, it acts by automorphism. You've seen it. Some of you have seen it. Okay. Uh, let me, let me do it, God, we don't have time. Let me do it very, very quickly. The answer is, uh, 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 this all can be said again at the infinitesimal level. So, at the, uh, inf sorry, this, my spelling has gone terrible. So, uh, at the infinitesimal uh, level, and now let me explain. So, um, 
so implicitly here, I've used the action of, uh, or I've extended the action of Tm. So Tm was a map from Q, ten, Q, time, Q to Q, but I've also extended it to a map from Q times Q into uh, uh, Q times Q uh, by acting on uh, by, by acting diagonally, right? I've used it here, right? I've used it when I said uh, uh, how do you act on well on a pair of elements. I've acted on a pair of elements by acting on them, by acting on each one. Okay? Uh, but uh, infinitesimally, if you think of T as an infinitesimal operation, then um, um, the way T should act on uh, so so uh, so uh, now let me call it maybe a different let me give give it a different name so let me call it L so the way L should act on a, a x should be extended to a map from Q times Q into Q times Q into uh, Q uh, times Q is by acting by Leib Leibniz's rule. So if, if, if you're thinking of an infinitesimal automorphism, the way it is acts on a pair is it either acts on the left one or on the right one. So uh, the, way it should, the way it should extend, or, and maybe I should turn it into a tensor product sign, so uh, it should be uh, L of x, y is extended to be uh, L, x, comma, y, or tensor y, uh, plus uh, x tensor L, y. And then uh, the uh, 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 automorphism operation. So, so the axiom, uh, the axiom which says that L is an automorphism, becomes um, L of uh, x star y is equal to um, L x star y plus uh, x star, sorry, this is not tensor, this is star, uh, L x star y plus x star L y and if L was multiplication on the right or acting with the binary operation by acting on the right then so I mean now if L uh, really it's L sub z of x is x star z so in our case this will become uh, x uh, star y uh, star z is equal to uh, x star z uh, star y plus x star uh, y star z does this look familiar now? This is the Jacobi identity. 
This is the Jacobi identity. So now let's rewrite instead of star, sorry, so let's rewrite instead of x star y, I write x bracket y, and this becomes x bracket y bracket z is equal to da 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 da, and this is the Jacobi identity. And you may no, and some of you may have seen it before, uh, one, one interpretation of the Jacobi identity is the fact that uh, the uh, adjoint, sorry, uh, the adjoint operation, so add x, is, uh, so this is an operation from the Lie algebra, from a Lie algebra to itself, uh, is a homomorphism of uh, Lie algebras. But what's the adjoint operation? It's exactly taking the bracket with a fixed element. Maybe I should have called this element z. So the adjoint of z is um, is, is bracketing with a fixed z. So, so, so this is, I mean, this is the infinitesimal version of a quandl. Okay? Uh, I'm already a minute and a half over time, so I should stop. Uh, and I didn't even go back to not theory, but so, and I should. Uh, but, uh, but, but we've, we've just learned about a funny object called a quandl. And, uh, uh, and that it's actually more natural than you would normal. Like you, you're led to it from not theory, but it's actually more natural than you 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 than it than it appears to be. So I'm two minutes over time. Let me quit. Any questions or comments? Um, I did have one. Yeah. Um, so like my guess is since Lie algebras don't uniquely determine. Um, Lie groups. I I would guess that quandles don't always, or I guess quandles don't necessarily uniquely determine a group. But no, there are, like, are quandles. There quandles that do not associate with a group at all. There are quandles that do not come from a group, and you know, if I had another half hour, I would say something about it. But I do have half an, another half an hour, but it's on Wednesday. Ah, good. Cool. Okay. So see you on Wednesday. Bye.